Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel once again. So there is definitely a lacune in understanding or preparing for a practical exam, especially for a second MBBS. So I'm going to start a series where I'm going to discuss good amount of gross pathology practical specimens, which I have got from your friends and your juniors and seniors, which can be primarily asked in a second year MBBS exam. The goal is to definitely provide both theory and practical exam. This will be a part of Medit for a whenever I have a, a for a series in the PW Medit, I'll add on this to that as well, right? If you're not able to do, please use this as a resource, fine? So now the first and the most important thing when a gross pathology specimen is given to any student is how do you describe it? Please understand no examiner will expect you to blurt out the right diagnosis. That is not what we want. We always look for the approach, how the student is approaching the specimen, how the student is describing the specimen, what are the thought process goes into the head of the student and what are the differential diagnosis. I am primarily concerned about differential diagnosis except for few spotters, few spotters like teratoma. There is no differential diagnosis, right? There is no other lesion which will have hair follicle, which will have tooth, which will have cystic structure. Those places I look for a diagnosis. In other places, I look for a differential diagnosis, right? So let's understand. What do I expect when I'm going to describe something? When I want any graduate to describe something, what do I expect in mind, right? There are two types of specimens. One is a jar specimen. That's what most of the hospitals will have, which is mounted in a jar, which is there in your pathology museum. And one is fresh specimen. There's a very less likely chance you might get a fresh specimen. But um, if your examiner is very, very hell-bent on giving a fresh specimen to test you, you might get that as well. So let's prepare for the worst examiner and also for the normal exam, right? I'll just go show you an image. This is a fresh specimen, which is just removed from the surgery. And this is a jar mounted specimen, right? Most of your colleges might have had this jar mounted specimen only, which has been there for years, perfectly fixed and everything done so that it doesn't decay or it doesn't alter much. Fine. Now let's see how to describe both of them. Let's go to the jar mounted specimen first, because like I said, that's more important and that's something which will commonly come, right? So first, obviously the pathology examiner or your external is going to say, uh, whatever student your number is, take this specimen. They're going to show uh, the hand to one of the jar specimen and ask you to take and describe and talk about that, right? So first thing, touch this specimen. That's very important, right? So if it's a jar mounted specimen, pick up the jar, rotate the jar, see it through and through, throughout the jar, right? Wait for a couple of like at least 15, 20 seconds. Don't talk about it. Even though I am 100% sure most of you will know the answer because you must have memorized the answer. First 15, 20 seconds. Don't talk about the specimen. Don't talk about the answer, anything. Just rotate the jar. Look at everything, right? So if this is the jar, I want you to just rotate it. See it from one side, see it from the side, see it from the back side, 15, 20 seconds. That's all right. So this gives me an understanding. At least the student is trying to analyze what's there in the jar, not just blurt out the answer. The first impression is always the best, right? Second, I want you to start with sir or ma'am, who was the examiner is that this is a jar mounted specimen. That's the first thing which I want you to say. Okay. Because you have to describe it, right? So it's a fresh specimen. You say it's a fresh specimen. It's a jar mounted specimen, right? So coming to this, I would say that, let's say the, if this is the specimen, I would say this is a jar mounted specimen of probably an intestine, right? So always use the term probably. That's always will help you in a very long term, right? So probably an intestine. If possible, you can use a term, um, uh, like if it's a uterus, you can say hysterectomy, right? You can use that, those terms also. If it's a colon, you can say colectomy, right? Probably an intestine or the surgery, whatever they have done, right? Probably it's an intestine or it's a surgery, whatever they have done. Fine. Okay. There are two more things. After this, you can say the specimen, it's supposed to be cut open. Okay. So a cut open specimen or not an open of just a gross specimen, right? Most of the specimens will be cut open. What I mean by cut open is this is cut open, right? A intestine is generally in hollow viscous, but here they've cut it and spread it out so that you can see all the every everything in this place, right? So that's how it is. This is a cut open specimen, right? So this is a cut open specimen of so and so like we already described in intestine measuring. This is very important, right? So measuring approximately like let's say 20 centimeter in length. Just use an, a random example of 20 centimeter. In. So how do you measure this without a scale? It's a very, very simple thing. You have your finger, right? There'll be creases like this. Every phalanx is approximately 2.5 centimeters, right? Approximately 
the every uh, phalanx, the proximal, middle, and uh, distal phalanx are approximately 2.5. You can use that in, uh, as a rough scale of measurement to say, okay, roughly 20 centimeter cutworm specimen, right? And then you have to use anatomical terminologies and medical terminologies to describe them, right? So if this is specimen, I would say this is the superior aspect of it, okay? This is the inferior aspect of it, okay? I will not be able to say lateral and medial because it's a jar mounted specimen. If it's in the body, I can say easily anatomically, this is a superior and inferior aspect of it, right? Okay, or above and below, whatever you can use. But I would very much be appreciative if the student uses superior or inferior, right? And this I can say approximately 20 centimeter cut open specimen of an intestine where close to uh, maybe approximately, okay, uh, 5 centimeter from the below end or the inferior end, I'm having an ulcero proliferative lesion right so this is the lesion i want to describe about right so you have to tell the examiner where it is right so it's approximately like five centimeter from the inferior end of the specimen and there is a approximately let's say uh, once you say that i have to measure this as well say let's say there's a five centimeter ulcero proliferative lesion okay so you have to describe the lesion right it's ulcero proliferative it's not throughout the lumen, okay? That's ulcero proliferative. So when I say ulcero proliferative, there are few differential diagnoses, especially in intestine with ulcero proliferative. It could be a TB intestine, there's a very good likely possibility, or it could be a cancer. Now it's where it comes to you, you already know the diagnosis. So lead it towards the diagnosis. That's very, very, very important. If you don't lead it towards the diagnosis, you might go wrong, right? So you know already from the name of the specimen or whatever it is, okay, this is a specimen of uh, adenocarcinoma of intestine, right? So it's an ulcero proliferative lesion, most with few areas of necrosis, because this makes you understand that, okay, you are going in terms of a cancer, because ulcero proliferative lesion will have necrosis, right? And maybe few papillary projections or few projections here and there, right? Then, if you are talking about a adenocarcinoma of intestine, if it's an adenocarcinoma of intestine, I want you to automatically lead into that area, like I said. If you remember the adenocarcinoma question or long answer, whatever you read for your pathology exams, you know that syndromes are very, very common, right? So obviously what I'll expect is, I would expect whether it's sporadic or syndromic. Sporadic means it can happen for anyone. Syndrome means like familial adenomatous polyposis, HNPC, it can happen, right? So next for me is what is important. After a few lines of description of this, I want you to say, so, uh, and the tumor is so many centimeters from the superior margin, like let's say 10 centimeters from the superior margin, five centimeters from the inferior margin, and the tumor, whenever you say, Try to give dimensions, 5 into 3 into 2 dimensions approximately is the ulcero proliferation present here, right? Then the surrounding mucosa, the surrounding mucosa appears normal, okay? This kind of gives me an insight, most likely, I'm not saying always, most likely it is sporadic, right? Or you can, if you have a specimen of surrounding mucosa showing polyps, you can say surrounding mucosa shows polyps. If there is polyps, I want you to number them. Like if it's like 4 or 5, you can number. If it's more than four or five, you can say multiple polyps, right? So just keep a rough assessment, four or five, number it. If it's more than four or five, or five, you can say multiple polyps. And try to explain the polyps also a little bit. Most of the polyps are around the one to two centimeter uh, in uh, length or in the width, just approximately, and uh, present so and so places. It's present here, present here, present here, randomly distributed. So keeping this mind, there are multiple polyps in the background and there is an ulcero proliferative lesion, I would think these terms are very, very important. I would think of an adenocarcinoma of intestine in the background of familial or syndromic pathology. That's all. Don't say familial adenomatous polyposis. Don't say Pugh-Jigger syndrome because it's very, very difficult for you to identify them here. On the other hand, you have 100 polyps. It's easy. 4-5 polyps, it's very, very difficult, right? So concluding note is just simple. So concluding note, so in this patient, there's a, because there's no multiple polyps in the background, I'm just going to give a sporadic adenocarcinoma report, right? Thinking in terms of that, right? Considering there's also proliferative lesion in this particular place, so and so death with necrosis, I would think, or I would consider the diagnosis of an adenocarcinoma of intestine, most probably of sporadic etiology. Okay, that's what is important. And then I would also require to do an histopathological examination to confirm. 
this is very 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 important right because this is how it happens in real life you cannot diagnose on gross there are very few spotters except that also requires histopathological information that's how you end it right so this is a setup you're going to say so this is just a setup to make sure the examiner knows okay this person can talk about something for one two minutes if you are able to hold the conversation in your end in a viva for one minute you win the game that's all right so these are just premises to help you rotate the jar 10 15 seconds this is jar specimen of so and so intestine if you are good in anatomy say why it is intestine you can look at the tinea you can look at the uh, things if it's a stomach grugosity give the points identification points then cut open measuring so and so and also proliferation lesion present here with areas of necrosis and abnormal or hemorrhagic lesion and then talk about the surrounding because of polyps present or not present and then say i would like a diagnosis of an adenocastoma and i would like to do histopathological examination for confirmation that's it end of story right perfect this is how we describe it this is not the description of this image i'm just giving you a very brief template on how to describe a gross specimen in your viva so please follow the youtube channel i would want i would definitely put across multiple gross specimens like this so that it's easy for you i have got some resources from your students it's easy for you to explain uh, the pathology viva the gross part we will take in the series the gross the instruments what you have whatever is required for your practical exam right see you soon till then bye bye from dr anjit bye bye